know, I was born in Ireland. I came here in 1960. Yeah. And did you speak Gaelic when you were in Ireland? I sure did. I had to learn Gaelic and English. And Ooh. English. Went to the, the Mercy Nuns. And now, being here, is it hard to speak Gaelic? Well, I used to speak it more because my husband, my late husband, was a fluent Irish speaker. Okay. Uh, now I, but I still know words of it, but I'm not as good as I was. Not as good as is you were. Is it because you don't have anyone to talk to in Gaelic yeah, now? Yeah, no, I do. I mean, I some people, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not, I don't speak as fluently as I used to. As my relatives in Ireland are teachers, mm -hmm. and ever, so when I go there, I, I come on it again. Do they still teach Gaelic in Ireland yeah, now? Yeah, I just have uh, one teacher, one my first cousin was te teaching at Trinity College in Dublin. He just oh. retired. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I have another teacher that taught at grammar school and a high school in the south of Ireland. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So my family is like... Educators, like educators, us. Educators, <laughs> educators, if you're into teaching. So they and learn English and Gaelic. Oh, yeah. When I went to school in Ireland years ago, you had to learn both languages, or you wouldn't pass your test. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? like, Was the test in English or in Gaelic? Both. Oh. We had to know our math in Irish. Even some of my own kids now know some of their, they can count to 10 or 20 in Gaelic. So you still taught it to your children? I did. That's good. good. <laughs> good. You kept the tradition and the language alive. Yes. They say that Gaelic or the Irish language is a, is a lost or endangered language. But in certain parts of Ireland, it's not. Like where I was born, it's still full Irish. And then in the, in the west of Ireland, in like they call it Connemara, mm -hmm. that's another Irish. That's where my late husband came from. Bala Banani Kota Kiri. Bala on Banani Kota Kiri. Bani Banani Kota Kiri. Okay. Okay. And when, when did you come to the United States? Uh, um, in 1968. Okay. Uh, 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 I was, I was born here. <laughs> okay, okay, so you were born in the United States? Yeah. Okay, and did, did you ever live in Ireland? Uh, three blean a dish, since, blean, three blean, since I was three years old. Okay, since you were two years old? Three. Three. Three years old? And when you went to school, did you learn Gaelic? Yes. Yes, taught. Yes. Yes. You were, okay, so you were taught Gaelic? Were you also taught English? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Do you feel a connection to Galen? Yes. yes, indeed. Okay, in what way? domination of the Irish. First of all, they took the land and no Irishman could own land. He could only rent it from the British. Secondly, they took the Irish religion and they banned it, they closed the church and they defrocked the priests. So to keep the religion alive, the priest had to climb the mountains and the hills to a rock and say mass. So the Irish people had to sneak up the mountain and it was called the rock mass. That kept the, our religion alive. As for education, the Irish headmasters couldn't have a school, they couldn't teach Irish, so they went into the fields under a hedge and they taught the kids and it was known as hedge schools. So in other words, uh, the, the Irish were educated through the hedge school system. 
you couldn't speak Irish. The Irish language was banned by the British, so you were also banned from having it. They depicted the Irish people as peasants and pigs. So when Punch magazine would show an Irishman, Bye.